Raider Nation, what is going on, guys? Coming in hot, 2-0, feeling good, man. We're going into week three now with another tough matchup on the road, a morning game, 10 a.m. game. Uh, and for the second time, this can be the, the second of the third being 10 a.m. game. So we're going to prove it now this year in 2020 that the, the Las Vegas Raiders can win on the road. Obviously, now we're going in 2-0. and Patriots are coming in 1-1, uh, but that doesn't matter. we got Cam Newton kind of getting – you know, getting a little hot over there in New England, and their defense is still causing issues. So this is going to be a quick little breakdown like I usually do every single week. Uh, so if you're missing these or this is your first one, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit those bell notifications. I do post-game shows. I do other videos in between. Do not miss it. So before we get into it, too, I also want to tell you, right, just like the Raiders winning season, Winning season returns at my bookie, and winning season means doubling your first deposit. Winning season means insane props, epic bonuses, and the craziest cross-sport wagers. At my bookie, winning season means watching live sports and betting live sports all season long. So, time to get amped up, Raider Nation. The NFL has returned, and that means action-packed Sundays and huge cash prizes. Get in on this action. Use promo code Raider Cody and double your first deposit. New players get up to $1,000 in free play, designed to add more excitement to the sports you love and the games you bet. Bet with the best this NFL season for your chance to win big. Use promo code RaiderCody and double your first deposit. Your winning season begins today, only at my bookie. So, like I said, Raiders, Patriots, we're on the road to 3-0. Let's get into it. I'm going to start this thing off with injuries because injuries was a huge thing in week two. Uh, looking at what the Patriots are dealing with right now, uh, their two starting wide receivers are the two guys that stand out to me on the injury report. That's Nikhil Harry and Julian Edelman. They're kind of just banged up a little knee and ankle issues. Uh, they're still practicing in like a limited fashion, so I'd expect them to be playing on Sunday. Uh, still something to keep track of. Don't expect them to be quite 100% um, on game day. Uh, I still expect them to be out there on the field, so that's something, of course, to still keep track of. And then James White uh, is dealing with some personal issues uh, off the field, um, and that's, that's keeping him away from the team right now. And obviously I wish him all the best and everything that he's dealing with um, with his parents. I believe he lost one of his, his mom or his dad, and the other one's in critical condition. So uh, thoughts and prayers for him, everything that they're dealing with. But getting back to on the field and looking at the other side, the other team, the good guys, the silver and black, right? Or should I say the bad guys, right? Because that's what we're playing this year. Um, Richie Incognito, he gets moved to IR today. So Richie Incognito on IR, dealing with that Achilles injury that he nursed all last week, uh, played the beginning of the game on Monday night, came out with the Achilles, and I think it's a smart move because you don't want that thing uh, to obviously turn into something bigger. Uh, deal with a little strain. Putting him on IR now with the new rules this year, that means a, a, a minimum of three games, which is good. So we get he gets three games on IR at a minimum. And then after three games, it just so happens to pan out to where that's our bye week the next week. So he's basically going to have over a month off from now until the next game that he'll be eligible to play uh, while only missing three games. So I think that's perfect, a good situation for Richie Incognito. Hopefully going to be able to come back 100% when we face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home on primetime. So we're still dealing with now Trent Brown and his calf injury. Uh, seems to be rumors swirling that he's dealing with some pain in both calves. I'm not really sure what's going on there. I don't know if it's it was the training regimen in the offseason, but whatever it was, he didn't come into 2020. Um, I don't think quite prepared. It wasn't a, a long-term injuries in his calf that he's dealing with. Uh, not you know no no major damage, so that's good. So now it's just kind of you know healing, getting healthy, getting 100%, getting in game shape for one, um, and getting back out there on the field and getting back to it. Denzel Good popped up this week on the injury report. We have quite a long injury report. Denzel Good popped up, I think with like some sort of like a, like a thumb or hand sprain, something, no big deal, um, and a little illness, but I think he's just fine. Sam Young actually returned in a limited fashion. He was dealing with, I believe, a groin, and I think he should be doing pretty good now. I would love to see him be able to get back on the field, right, with no Richie Incognito. I'd love to be able to see Denzel Good slide into Richie Incognito's spot, have Sam Young starting at tackle. If not, we still have... John Simpson. So John Simpson's another guy that stepped up big time for us Monday night. Um, if he needs to go, I think he will go. Josh Jacobs resting what I thought was going to be uh, some sort of hammy injury. Turns out to maybe be some sort of hip injury that he's kind of like keeping track of. I still expect him to play Sunday. 
but I also expect him to rest throughout the week so he's 100%. Don't got to worry about him in practice. Like I, I, I'll warn you now, I don't see him practicing. I see him resting, and that's completely okay. Nick Kwiatkowski still out with a pec. Um, maybe a possibility he plays. I still don't think so. They obviously chose not to put him on IR. Um, it's already been one game. This will be the second game. I don't expect him missing three games. Otherwise, I would see them have him, you know, they'd probably put him on IR. So any time waiting for him maybe to start returning in a limited fashion, not sure I expect him to be back Sunday. Um, and then, of course, now I'm looking at Edwards, Ruggs, Renfro, Arnett, Littleton, Abram. Uh, they are all on the injury report, all minor injuries, all practice. Most of them all practiced in full. Um, and that was really big, of course, now coming from Jonathan Abrams' point of view because he took that ugly hit uh, that I wasn't even sure where he hit. I thought he might have got, you know, hit in the head at one point. Obviously, he was back on the field, so he was fine. Uh, seems like, you know, the grunt of the blow came to his shoulder. Actually, his right shoulder. I'm sorry. came to his right shoulder. Um, last year's injury was his left shoulder. I think he's still going to be all right. Seeing those guys back on the field is awesome. Now, like I said, I mean, throughout a couple weeks, there were some major injuries throughout the NFL. Um, for us, yeah, we're pretty banged up. I think we made it through pretty well. Luckily, we have an early bye week this year, so hopefully that's going to help us kind of get ready for the, the tail end of the season. Now, just like last week, when we're talking about production on the field and the team, the matchup that we're dealing with, we are facing a nasty secondary in New England, right? You got, you got the McCourty twins, Jason and Devin. Uh, you got Stephon Gilmore, who was last year probably the best corner the best coverage corner in the NFL was probably Stephon Gilmore last year. Now we saw last week he got bullied around a little bit by DK Metcalf. So we could see something with Brian Edwards. I think both these guys could cause uh, some matchup issues for Stephon Gilmore because I, I think Henry Ruggs, I, he can't run with Henry Ruggs. He's going to get physical with him. Um, and I still expect us now to be able to take those one or two deep shots to Henry Ruggs. And I think week three is where we finally start connecting on it. I don't care at this point about this about a tough defense. What we did this last week, week two, to the New Orleans Saints says enough to me. We can play, we can throw, we can line up, we can get in the, we can throw Derek in the gun, and we can sling it on any defense in the NFL at this point if we want to. Now it's just a matter of preparing and hitting it right. So while we're looking at this, I see their secondary keying in, and just like everyone's talking about on Darren Waller. Well, guess what? I think Darren Waller's good enough to where he's not going to get shut down. But I will tell you what, I will tell you what, the Raiders are not going to be scared to spread that ball around. Go ahead. If you want to double-team Darren Waller, go ahead. we got plenty of other weapons. Plenty of other weapons. We'll, we'll unleash Foster Moreau, just like we did last week. He might have two or three targets. He might be featured in the red zone. We still have Brian Edwards, who's, I mean, just kind of getting, you know, he's not he's knocking the dust off a little bit. I mean, he's getting broke into the NFL. He's going to get even more comfortable as the weeks go on. And as he saw some of the big catches last week, and he was going up against guys like Marshawn Lattimore, he's not going to be scared of any matchups this week either. I think he can get heated up. And I'm telling you, any minute we're waiting for that big play to break off with Henry Ruggs. Until then, we're going to te- keep taking those shots. We're going to keep the defense honest. And, hey, we might walk away with a penalty or two just like we did last week. So the the main key, even though who we faced last week, the main key now this week is we're going in here. Derek Carr hasn't thrown an interception all year. These two, these two Through two weeks, he hasn't thrown an interception. So the key right now, week three, against a Patriots defense who leads the league in interceptions, they have four interceptions already in two games. Four interceptions in two games because this defense, you can move the ball on them. You can get the ball going down the field on the New England Patriots defense, but where they kill you is turnovers. They kill you in turnovers, so you got to protect the ball. You do not want to give them a short field. That's exactly that was the only reason Tom Brady was winning football games last year, and that's why the New, Eng- New England Patriots are still going to be contenders this year is because for some whatever reason, they were getting really good at taking the ball away on defense. So turn around to the other side of the ball. I see their offense very similar to ours. Uh, not necessarily the way they play, obviously, because Cam Newton and Derek Carr are two completely different players, but the way they're able to move the ball down the field, the way they're able to control the clock, the way they're, I mean, really, the time of possession battle this week is going to be very interesting because there's going to be a lot of short yardage, keep the ball secure, don't turn it over, um, and, you know, kind of keep the play in your favor. So I see us hopefully now being able to disrupt Cam Newton and the matchup I'm looking at again this week, it's Jonathan Abram against the best back in the backfield. And this week it's going to be Cam Newton for me, Jonathan Abram, and Cam Newton. I'm going to tell you last week, 
there was there was a factor of Jonathan Abram and Drew Brees, a blitzing Jonathan Abram, and I guarantee you, Jonathan Abram laid one good hit on Drew Brees last week. I know you guys remember that, where he threw it over the back of the end zone, and Jonathan Abram came in and, and wiped him out right there after he threw it away. That got in his head. You don't want to get hit by Jonathan Abram. Drew Brees doesn't want to get hit by Jonathan Abram. I guarantee you, neither does Cam Newton. Cam Newton will go out there and he'll, and he'll I mean, He'll go in there with the best of them. Don't get me wrong. He's a very physical football player, but that's also what gets him hurt. He's not going to want to go heads up with Jonathan Abram. So that's going to be my X factor on defense. Again, our guy, Jonathan Abram. And I expect now, if we can get a little bit more disruption, create a turnover. Give us one turnover. One turnover a week. That's all I'm asking. One turnover a week. If we can produce 15, 16 a year, 20 a year, this year in 2020, if we can do 20 turnovers throughout the year, 2020 and 16 games, that's going to be the recipe just enough for our offense to get the ball, get that extra possession, just win the turnover battle. Our offense can do it. I don't care if you guys are giving up chunk yards. I don't care if you guys are giving up points. If you can put our offense in a position to put up 25 to 30 points week in and week out, we can win some football games. And I think we're very capable of doing that. So, like I said, guys, we're 2-0. and We're fired up. We're rolling in to New England hot. I don't care if it's a morning game. I think we're looking good. We're built off momentum right now, guys. We are built off momentum, and I think we can keep this thing rolling for a few weeks. So, fired up. Road to 3-0. I think we can make this thing happen. 2020 is extra special for us, and I think we're going to make things happen even bigger throughout the season. So, that's all I got for you. Like I said, make sure you subscribe. Hit those bell notifications. I'll be going live within minutes after the New England game. Within minutes, I'll be home now. I'll be home probably the rest of the season. I won't be in Las Vegas anymore. So make sure you're ready uh, to jump in on this post-game show and do things the way we usually do it. But with that being said, shout out to Stage Door Casino and the hospitality last week. They killed it. They absolutely rocked Las Vegas for us. It was amazing. There was no other, no better way to experience a Raider game, except for going to Allegiant Stadium. This was the next best thing that we could have possibly did that was hang out at Stage Door Casino. So make sure you guys keep them in mind. Anytime you guys are in Las Vegas, you visit Stage Door Casino because that is the official, the unofficial official Raider Nation bar in Las Vegas. That's what we're making it. I'm telling you, that's where the vibe is. That's where that's where everything happens. I'm telling you, it was so nuts in there. You can, As you can tell, I'm still trying to find the rest of my voice. It's Wednesday. Wednesday. I did the show on Monday. I'm still trying to find my voice. It was absolutely nuts in there. The atmosphere was off the hook. Probably will be this week too whenever we play the Patriots. It don't matter if it's an away game or a home game. That's where Raider fans go. So if you're in Las Vegas, make sure you go there on game day. So, 3-0, that's my prediction. I don't drop I don't drop score predictions, but I want you to drop them in the, in the comments. Drop your score prediction in the comments, of course, with the Raiders W. If it ain't got a Raiders W on it, I don't want to see it. So, Raider Nation, I will see you guys Sunday afternoon. Later. Later.